Server-side includes are one of the most powerful features of PHP. Simply put, they do the same for HTML as external style sheets do for CSS. Just change one file and it updates the content of all associated files. Let's take a look at a really simple example. I've loaded this page into a browser and I'm just going to zoom in so we can see the text more clearly. The first paragraph says that it's in the original HTML, but the second paragraph says it's in an external file. And then the third paragraph says it goes back to the original HTML. So let's view the page source. If you look at line 12, that's the paragraph that says it's in an external file, but it looks as though it's an integral part of the HTML. Let's go back to our page and look at page 2. Here, the first paragraph says it's in an external file, but the second one is in the original HTML. And if we check the page source again, line 12, that's the paragraph that's in the external file, but it looks as though it's an integral part of the HTML. So let's see how this is done in my code editor. There on line 12 is a PHP code block, and it uses the command include, and it refers to includes slash external dot PHP. On page 2, exactly the same code block is there, and that's what's including the external file, which is here external.php. And note that it contains only a snippet of HTML. One of the most common mistakes with server-side includes is to leave the doc type, HTML, head and body tags in the file. A server-side include isn't like an iframe, it's not an independent web page, it's part of the actual web page. And you can use multiple server-side includes in a page, and the web server pulls everything together to form a single web page, rather like a jigsaw puzzle with no pieces left over. So let's make some changes to this external.php. I'm going to add a little heading, and then another paragraph. And then if we save that, and go back to the browser and get to that original page, reload it. There it is on page two, and if I go to page one, exactly the same content is included in page one. So that's how server-side includes work. Let's just go back and look at the external PHP file again. Notice in my files, I've put it in a folder called includes. It's common to store server-side includes in a separate folder, and this makes for easier maintenance. And although the file contains only HTML, I've used .php as the file name extension. Even if the external file contains PHP code, the file name extension is actually unimportant. Once it's been included in a PHP file, it becomes part of that PHP file, and all that PHP is interested in is finding the file. Some people try to distinguish include files by giving them the file name extension .inc. But I think that this is a bad idea because most web servers display .inc files as plain text. And as a result, passwords and other sensitive information in include files could accidentally be exposed. So this has been a deliberately trivial example to demonstrate how server-side includes work. But I hope you can imagine how useful they are in serving common page elements to multiple pages in a website. An include file can contain anything that you would put normally in a web page, HTML, PHP code, or a mix of the two. In this example, I use the command called include here on line 12. But PHP actually has four commands for server-side includes, and we'll look at the differences next.